So now we create a location for the source files. And we change the uh, properties of that to make it sticky so that only the owner can remove the files. So what I want to do next is to go into that directory just so that these files here I'm going to download which is the first is a wget list which has got a list of all the locations of the sources okay oops paste that in let's try that again copy paste why isn't that copying address right that's better oh now is that not going to get anything that's probably not going to get anything at all oh no it has okay All oh, right. Okay, I didn't realise. So the, the part of the manual is this actual file with the list of uh, packages. I didn't realise that. So now I can run this command here to actually fetch the sources, source packages. And just wait for those to download.
Okay, so that's all downloaded. I'm going to grab this MD5 sum file now. And we can run these commands in to validate that the packages we downloaded are what they say they are and there's been no corruption in the down, download and they're all okay there's no errors reported at the bottom so they're fine so the next bits got a list of all the packages with their locations and home pages and the package the patches required which have also been downloaded you can see at the end here one two three four five six one two three four five six patches yeah that's fine so final preparations so if you remember uh, from the introduction the um, chapter 5 no longer exists as such it's been split into three or four chapters um, in fact in my first video I was unsure about the chapter 7 whether it was a uh, old chapter 5 or a old chapter 6 chapter um, looking at it again it, it's probably part of the old chapter 5 because it's still although that's the chapter the end of the troop directory um, it's still building temporary tools at that point so chapter 5 is basically uh, I think it's three chapters now um, and chapter 8 the new chapter 8 is the old chapter 6 where we're building the actual final system but as you can see here, it's already changed straight away in chapter 4.2. We're already starting to build the directories, which we normally wouldn't have done until um, the old chapter 6 where we were building the final system. So we need to create these directories. So again, the first thing to do, just double check. We've got the LFS variable set. We have, otherwise if we didn't have that set, we'd be attempted to create these directories on our root system um, and it'll probably fail or do some untold um, damage possibly so let's just run these commands in and that's okay and then we make a tools directory as well to put the temporary tools in now we add a user. Now normally I recommend running these commands in one at a time to check the output of them like so. Um, I probably won't do it a lot of the time so I know roughly what to look for. Uh, I may do it now and then just to be sure but uh, generally it's a good idea if you've not done LFS before or you're new to it just to check that um, you know that there aren't any errors occurring because th these commands will just run in produce errors and then it will just quickly execute the next command without any regard for how how the previous command went so for example this one here is two commands you can see the first one's run successfully there's no errors and the second one yep that's it that's fine as well So what we've done is with the directories we've just created, we've given ownership to LFS and we're doing the same for the sources now. And then we're going to become the user LFS. I'm going to set up an environment for the LFS user, basic environment. And there's explanation about what those all about and then we can source that and we've got a very basic prompt now so the make flags yeah we can um, add that in as well so I'm going to modify the bash profile and add that in uh, don't want to put it in now bash RC probably bash RC actually And I'll add it at the bottom here. 
So this machine's got four cores, so I'll just copy and paste this. Obviously, if you've got more cores or fewer, you'll want to modify that. So I resource the bash profile and just check that that variable exists. Yes, and it's populated. So there's a bit there about test suites. So um, if I remember right, there's no mention of test suites at all now in the construction part of the book. It's uh, they just mentioned testing in the final actual system build. So these are the chapters which form the temporary um, tools part. Um, and let's say this is the bit this chapter was unsure whether it belonged to the temporary or the final part. The thing that threw me was it says you enter the true environment. Yes, you do, but you're still building temporary packages which are not going to be used when the LFS system is up and running because these all get rebuilt in Chapter 8. So you can see basically we build a cross tool chain, then some cross uh, compiling temporary tools and then some final temporary tools before we go into the final um, chapter for the final build. Um, and if you want more details so, um, about this you can uh, listen to my first video, the first introduction, give some details or if you look at, look for my videos on cross Linux from scratch uh, there's a slide there which explains cross compiling quite well um, in fact, you'll probably get a little bit more out of that because it's cross-compiling across um, different architectures, as I remember. Um, whereas this is cross-compiling with the same source and target, um, but you're just using cross-compiling to divorce the host from the target system. So important preliminary material. This is definitely worth a read. This will explain how the cross-compiler works. Um, there's a lot of detail there. Um, I'm not going to go through it again. This is what I went through on the introduction, but well worth a read. Read it again. Read it several times until understand it to make sense of what's going on. Okay, so the book's actually reminding us here now to check we've got LFS set still, even though we've changed user. Make sure this new user's got it set. And it has. And it also says to check that these things... You know that you've done the host system requirements. I have had a few people ask questions about things on my channel, and it's clear that they haven't run the host system requirements check. So um, it is worth running that rather than just going head first, assuming things are in place and they're not. Um, the more things you check, the fewer problems you're going to get.